This video is on authentication methods. Authentication is a way of finding out whether the user exists in the database or not. Once the user is found from the database, the next step is to ensure how many services that user has the right to access. Example is when user wants to check his or her email. They can't just access it by going to a URL. They must have a user ID and a valid password to log in and check their email. Simply put, authentication confirms the validity of the user. After authentication, the authorization procedure is carried out. When the user is authenticated, the next step is to find out what data access is available for that user. Let's go over several authentication terms. First, we have directory services. Instead of maintaining individual local login accounts, you can use an external authentication directory service. It provides a single sign-on for groups of users. It can either use RADIUS, which is widely used authentication technique. It stands for Remote Authentication Dial-in User Service. And this is a client server protocol and software that enables the remote access servers to communicate with a central server to authenticate dial-in users and authorize their access to the requested system or service. There's also TACS Plus, Terminal Access Controller Access Control Program, which is similar to RADIUS, but it is used on Unix networks. Radius use UDP protocol, whereas TACS Plus use TCP. Next, we have Federation. Federation is a system that grants access to other users who may not have that local login. It means a single token is given to the user who is entrusted or authenticated across various systems, just like single sign-on. It is created by third parties so that users can log in with separate credentials. Example is when you don't have an account for an unfamiliar website, but you can use Facebook or Google account to log in like you do. Before establishing the federated network, the third party has to create a trust-based relationship. Next, we have attestation. It means to certify. Attestations and certifications are used by the industry to assess your security defenses. There are multiple technologies that accomplishes the authentication. We got time-based one-time password, TOTP, this is a password generated by a computer algorithm that uses the current time as a source of uniqueness. And time-based one-time passwords are widely used for two-factor authentication. Then we have HMAC-based one-time password. It stands for Hash-Based Message Authentication Code. It is an event-based OTP with the counter as the moving factor in each code. The moving factor is incremented based on the counter each time the HOTP is requested and validated. The generated code is valid until you actively request another one, at which point the authentication server validates it. And when the code is validated, the user gains access, and the OTP generator and the server are synced. Next we have short message service. It's basically a text on your phone. It can be used for authentication using one-time password and challenge response. Because it's vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks, it is less secure, but it is still widely used. It sends a one-time password to the user's phone using text, and the user is approved after entering the password into their login authentication. And there's the SMS challenge response which sends a question to user's phone via SMS, asking if the authorization attempt is approved or not. If the user replies with yes, the authentication is complete and the user is logged in. Next, we have token key. A security token is a small hardware device that allows the owner to access a network service. The device could be in form of anything from smart card to even a fob key. Security tokens add an extra layer of assurance by using two-factor authentication. The user has a PIN number that authorizes them as the owner of that specific device. The device then displays a number that uniquely identifies the user to the service, allowing them to log in. Each user's identification number is changed on a regular basis. Let's go into smart card a little more. Smart card has a secure microchip that enables user authentication by generating, storing, and operating cryptographic keys. Smart card authentication works with the help of smart cards, smart card devices, and authentication software. Smart cards are a strong form of authentication with cryptographic keys, which is protected logically and physically, making it hard to compromise. Next, we have static codes. Static authentication makes use of single authenticator. This type of authentication only protects against attacks where an imposter is unable to obtain the authenticator. And then we have the authentication applications. 
Usually it has a dialog that allows users to enter their credentials and allows them to store them in the application server password cache so they are not prompted the next time they run an application on that application server depending on how you configure it. Then we have push notification. It enables user authentication by sending a push notification directly to a secure application on the user's device. It's basically an alert box for authentication attempt. Users can view authentication details and approve or deny access. Then we have phone call authentication. It's simply a one-time password relayed through a phone call. Oh, yeah.